Today's topic is delivered through the plate mark form of pharmacology notes and the topic is delivered by registered pharmacist Humaira Shaheen, the gold medalist. Today's topic is selective beta adrenergic receptors antagonists. Selective beta adrenergic receptors antagonists or we can say we are studying about selective beta blockers. As we have studied that the adrenergic receptors antagonists are of two types. These types are, it could be non-selective beta blocker or can be selective beta blocker. The non-selective beta blockers are those type of beta blockers which have affinity for both beta 1 and beta 2 receptors. I mean these are the drugs which have affinity for both beta 1 and beta 2 receptors. While there are some drugs which are selective, which has affinity only for beta-1 receptors. So those which are, have affinity for both beta-1 and beta-2 receptors, these are termed as non-selective beta adrenergic receptors antagonists. And we have studied about these drugs in the last lecture that non-selective beta blockers, these are really effective drugs. These are those drugs which are used in the case of hypertension, these are used in the case of congestive heart failure. These are used in coronary artery diseases. So these are very effective drugs in the case of hypertension, congestive heart failure and coronary artery diseases. But as they are non-selective, so by acting on the bronchial smooth muscles, they inhibit the smooth muscles is these non-selective blockers, they act on bronchial smooth muscle. Bronchial smooth muscles. And inhibit that smooth muscles. And by inhibiting the smooth muscles, it will produce vasoconstriction. And this will lead to bronchoconstriction and this bronchoconstriction is sometimes not to be desirable effect. We are using the drug for hypertension and it is causing bronchoconstriction so in the case of the patients with asthma or COPD then what will be the effect in the case of that coronary obstructive pulmonary diseases and in the case of asthma this bronchoconstruction is not a desirable effect. So to eliminate the side effects, to eliminate this bronchoconstriction, a new class of the drugs were used that is selective beta adrenergic receptors antagonist or selective beta blockers. These are the drugs which are also used in hypertension, but they does not cause bronchoconstriction. And we usually refer these drugs to those patients which are suffering with COPD or asthma. Now, what are the drugs which are included in this class? The drugs which are selective beta receptor blockers, that is selective beta 1 receptor blockers, which have affinity only for beta 1. These drugs include adenolol, azivitolol, metoprolol, bisoprolol, nabibolol, and asmolol. These are the drugs which blocks only beta-1 receptors. Now, among these drugs, these drugs are termed as cardioselective. Cardio selective. Now, these drugs are termed as cardioselective drugs. Atinolol, azivitolol, metoprolol, bisoprolol, these all drugs are effective in the case of cardiac actions when given the low doses, but they lose their action when given at a high doses. They usually require dose 50 to 100 folds less than non-selective blockers. Example would be that propranolol. This propranolol, it is a non-selective beta blocker. It also used in a congestive heart failure or coronary artery diseases. 
But if we use adenolol, azubutalol, or metoprolol, then the dose of these drugs will be 50 to 100 fold less than the propranolol. So at low doses, we can have the same effect. Now, these drugs are cardio selective. Obviously, at the low doses, not the high doses. So, how they act? What they do? We have catecholamines or neurotransmitters, NM body, epinephrine, norepinephrine. So, what is epinephrine and norepinephrine do with the heart? If you see a heart, then on the heart, there are SA node, right? Yes, there is SA node, there is AV node, there is Pukenji fibers and myocardium. Now, on myo SA node, on AV node, on myocardium, which receptor is present? Yes, the receptor present is beta 1. Beta 1 receptor is present on SA node, beta 1 receptor is present on AV node, and beta 1 receptor is present on myocardium. So, when epinephrine comes, and epinephrine acts on this receptor, when epinephrine comes and binds to this receptor here with beta 1 and stimulates SA node, blocks SA node, sorry. So, by binding with the SA node, it will cause a decrease, it will cause increase in heart rate. When blockers bind, it will decrease heart rate. When epinephrine bind, it will increase heart rate. Epinephrine, the normal catechol means when binding with these receptors, it causes increased heart rate. It causes increases in the heart rate. So, what is this term called when heart rate is increased? That is positive chronotropic action. And when epinephrine act on this myocardium, it will increase stroke volume. And increase stroke volume, it is termed as positive anotropic action. Yes, when SA node is stimulated, heart rate is increased, and when heart rate is increased, it is termed as positive chronotropic action. And when when uh, it acts on a uh, myocardium, then it increases stroke volume, and increasing the stroke volume is termed as positive inotropic action. And this heart rate and stroke volume is termed as cardiac, and ultimately the cardiac output is increased. This is the normal physiology. Now, what the blockers do? Blockers will do totally opposite of that. We will do this with a black. Now, beta 1 blockers. Adenolol, azimutolol, or metoprolol. It's come to the receptors, it binds with the receptors. On SA node, it decreases heart rate. On myocardium, it decreases short volume, thus, it produces negative chronotropic action and negative inotropic action. So, if we say that whenever these drugs bind on, a, uh, on these receptors or uh, bind to the uh, beta 1 select receptors, then it decreases heart rate, it decreases stroke volume. This decrease in the heart rate is termed as negative chronotropic and this is termed as negative inotropic and thus they decrease cardiac output. Got it? Okay. On a heart, it causes decrease in the cardiac output. They does not have as uh, such effect on the peripheral resistance. They just have a little effect on peripheral resistance. What, what is the effect on glucose metabolism? Glucose metabolism. If you remember that propanol when act on the glucose metabolism and find the beta 2 receptors and but we have selective beta blockers being which act on a beta 1 receptor. So in the case of glucose metabolism, these beta 2 receptors will not be affected and glucose metabolism will not be altered. It is not altered. It remains as such. Now if the patient else with uh, diabetes mellitus and if we give a propranolol and it will compromise its glucose metabolism, so that will not be useful for the patient which is ha who is suffering with diabetes mellitus. So in this, those cases where the patient is suffering with glucose metabolism, uh, sorry, when the patient is suffering with diabetes mellitus, then glucose metabolism should not be altered. In that case, we can use atinolol, azimutolol or metoprolol.
yes so the peripheral resistance is not as much on to it glucose metabolism is not also as such cardiac output is decreased and what about the plasma hdl level it does not alter even the plasma hdl level it will not affect the plasma hdl level now what are the therapeutic uses of these drugs where we use these drugs the therapeutic uses i have discussed in the whole lecture i can uh, think you can tell me easily that what are the therapeutic uses yes it can be used in the case of hypertension but in those patients which are suffering with asthma it can be used in hypertension but those which are suffering with copd it can be used in a patient with hypertension and diabetes and like this yes these are the therapeutic uses of these drugs so what we have discussed beta 1 selective receptor blockers in which the drugs are adenolol azimutolol metoprolol bisoprolol nabibolol and asmolol okay among these drugs the asmolol is a type of a drug which cannot be given orally these are having ester linkage the warning is of ester linkage and due to this ester linkage if it's given orally then in the liver they are damaged so asmolol is always given iv because these are damaged by stomach and first pass factor is high so adenolol azimutolol and metoprolol these all drugs are used in the case of hypertension asthma and copd cases where the propranolol cannot be used Hope this is clear to you here. You can ask the questions in the comments. Thank you.